I'm trying to think of a really clever way to introduce the next speaker, and my mind's gone completely blank. Uh, you all know, and I was, I couldn't believe this. You know, you know the phrase, it's worse than you think? I couldn't believe this when I heard it. Uh, and I'll let the, the speaker tell more about it. But, but the connection between the Nation of Islam and Scientology? What? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Louis Farrakhan is a Scientologist, believe it or not. So our next speaker knows a lot about this subject. And I'd like to welcome to Flag Down 2014, Ishmael Bay. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? Great. Great. Good, good. I'd like to, uh, first of all, say uh, thank you for, for welcoming me and allowing me to come to, to address you. I'd like to thank you, of course, Boo, and everyone else who will have opened up their, their hearts and their minds to at least listen to what we're dealing with today. But before I start, I would like to say that in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is indeed his messenger, and I'd like to greet each and every one of you in the greeting words of peace, of assalamu alaikum. Peace to you. Peace. 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 Please give yourselves a round of applause. Why do I say that? I say that because what you do right now, it takes a tremendous amount of courage. We are on the winning side. We are on the victorious side of this. Of this situation, we are not the victims. We come from a position of power. And we know and understand that I would be insulting you in trying to explain to you the details of Scientology and what it does to us and what it does to innocent people, the destruction the destruction of humanity. But what we can do is, I can give you some insight of maybe some questions that you may have about how the nation of Islam functions, but more importantly, I am not in the Muslim reconverting business. I don't waste one second trying to convince someone who has already made their choice and decision if they are with Minister Farrakhan, that is totally his decision on what he wants to do with his organization. However, once you leave the confines of your buildings and you come into the black community, it is now my business. I will not allow anyone to set up shop in any cult activity in my community and go unchallenged. There is no one that is challenging from our community what is taking place. And that's an atrocity. That's cowardice on the highest level. I started dealing with this basically in 2008 because I had my best friend, Professor Denham L. His family was in Scientology while he was living in Jonesburg, South Africa. And he was calling me from South Africa while he was living there for two years. He contacted me and was telling me that this cult of Scientology has his family. So he went into Scientology to get his family out of it. But while he was uh, sharing his information with me, I was telling him, brother, there's some things that are going on here in America that are similar to what's going on in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we started comparing notes. So he said, I'll be coming back home in approximately six months, and we can go and we can start to alert our community of what was going on after I was telling him what I saw that was going on while I was in the Nation of Islam and while I was out. I have been in the Nation of, I was in the Nation of Islam under Minister Farrakhan for approximately a decade, from the, uh, 1990 to the year 2000. However, I got my knowledge of self in 1982 under an affiliate group of the Nation of Islam through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which is called the 5% Nation. I've been a 5%er since 1982, proudly. So what I was able to do was compare the notes of first picking up Dianetics in the year 1988. I was already doing a comparative study of how Dianetics could coincide with what my history was as a 5%er. So I had already had a base knowledge of what Dianetics could do and maybe some comparing what they were offering comparing to what I had already, already known. 
So once we started, uh, once Professor Denim L came back to America, we went to the media and we started telling the blog talk shows and anyone that would listen that the Nation of Islam is going to make an announcement that they're joining up with the Church of Scientology. We were yelling at the wind. Nobody was listening to us. They would say, well, we know you, Ish. You're a sharp brother. But that sounds really far-fetched. The Nation of Islam and the Church of Scientology, really? And we were saying, yes, really. This is what's taking place. They're going to meetings. And then in 2009, because again, Professor Denimiel and I were already starting to compare the notes in 2008. In 2009, there was an online photo and that shows Al Sharpton and Minister Farrakhan, and the caption says that they were taking uh, secret Scientology lessons. This was in 2009. It bore witness to what we were talking about, and people started constantly contacting us. Oh my God, you were right. This is what you were talking about. Al Sharpton and Minister Farrakhan isn't these secret meetings with Scientology. Yes, yeah, that's what we were trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so once we were able to, to see people face, then it gave us a, a even more valid background to kind of lay the foundation of what you see today. We welcome anyone to come and join us in Scientology Invasion of the Black Community. We have a diverse group of people. We share and exchange information. The people who are in Scientology are always um, very helpful in explaining a lot of the nuances that we don't know within our community. And simultaneously, we're able to educate you on how things are affected within our community from our perspective. We come from a heavily, a heavily uh, Christian uh, uh, Baptist type of a background, a church background, so we're able to exchange and fellowship so that we can compare notes to save all of humanity in a positive way. I made sure that when I came here, it was at my own expense. No one pays me for anything. I'm blessed to have a good job. I'm blessed to be able to pay for my own things. So I don't want anyone thinking that I'm some mouthpiece for someone else. I don't want anyone else thinking that I'm not going to say anything to you that I would not say to anyone else in the street. I'm a very upfront, I'm a humble person, but I'm a very direct person. So when I tell you that L. Ron Hubbard is the goddamn devil on how he <laughs> sensitive that I understand that his family member is here. And in saying that, I want to put it in a Hold on, hold on. I want to put this in a proper context. Because if you don't understand where I'm coming from when I say this, then you'll miss the whole point of what I say when I say it. When I say that he's the goddamn devil, I say it with absolutely no apology. Because something that is satanic is something that is going to do wickedness and harm to an innocent person. Amen. I consider each and every one of you vessels of good. So if you're a vessel of good and you are of good character, I have absolutely no issue with you. However, if you are a person who is silent, when you see wickedness and atrocities going on against innocent people, families being broken up, people being exploited financially, harm coming to them, and you don't stand up as a human being and defend them, then yes, I will put you in that category. Right. So the point that I'm trying to make is this. If you have specific questions from the insight that I can give to you, I'm happy to impart any knowledge and information that I can. However, all that I ask of you is that you come to me sincerely. Don't come to me with a hidden agenda. Don't come to me with any side bullshit. I don't play. What I do, I will give you the same courtesy and respect that you give me. And what we can do together is we can change the condition and uplift our people. So thank you so much. I'm happy to assist and answer any questions that, that Allah may, may bless me with. Yes. Hi. So, I understand I've seen some of these things about Mr. Farrakhan uh, doing Scientology and also ordering, commanding um, the people in his portion of the nation of Islam uh, to do Scientology making it mandatory for them. I just wanted to know your 
understanding or your witnessing of that and how do you view it? Okay. So basically the question is, you're asking me, just in case the microphone didn't hear you, you're asking me that if someone has, uh, you, you heard about Minister Farrakhan ordering the Nation of Islam to undertake Scientology, and what's my thoughts about that, right? Yes. Okay. What, the way that I see it is this. Minister Farrakhan did not put a mass message out that everyone has to follow Scientology. What he said was that the laborers within the Nation of Islam, you're not allowed to be a laborer unless you undertake Scientology. There's a specific difference in that. A laborer is not a general member, but if you're to take a laboring position, you are to undergo that. However, in saying that, there's a disingenuous tone in what, in what Minister Farrakhan is saying to his specific people. They are outright lying, to be perfectly frank with you. They say that they're only dealing with Dianetics. That's a bold-faced lie. They're also dealing with applied scholastics. That is not Dianetics. And I'm not just talking to you people in here. I'm talking to my community that needs to understand this. Applied scholastics is a part of Scientology that's separate than Dianetics. They're also going to the Scientology retreat which is at the headquarters of Applied Scholastics, and then they put another name on the same exact place and call it Camp Kiswa. But it's the same exact Scientology location. In other words, they're just putting sugar on shit. It's the same thing. You understand? So they're, they're dealing with multiple things. They're meeting in Scientology buildings. They're having marriages in Scientology churches. You understand? And they never call, I want to make sure that this devil understands me completely. Izzy Chape. This bastard goes on the film and says that there were never any effing black people in the church before. And he goes and says, if you want to know about the nation of Islam, you come and see me. That's the tone of a slave master. So any of the Negroes that are paying Izzy Chape who runs that Englewood uh, uh, Scientology building, you're nothing but slave catchers. You're in the Los Angeles community and you're nothing more than slave catchers because they never asked for Izzy Chait to be denounced. Nobody stood up, but yet you have Tony Muhammad who sold out the entire black community sit here and chastise the NAACP just last week for what Sterling was saying for the Los Angeles Clippers. I put David Miscavige in the same exact category as Sterling. <laughs> and they're selling fiction to our people. What do I mean by that? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that you have to study the foundation of anything in order to see if it's going to bear fruit or not. Well, you, if you go back to the origins of Dianetics, you have to go back to Zenu, <laughs> right? Because when you really understand the situation, when I stood before you, I said that there's no God but Allah. That means that he has no associates. Zenu is no associate of Allah. You understand? Allah has no associate. So Zenu, if you go into this history, the plane flies through the space. And then it comes and it lands on some, this is 76 trillion years ago. They give you this merged up history. When, come on, y'all. Not y'all. I'm just saying y'all understand what I'm talking about. I'm saying to my community, come on, y'all. We just have, we still have a missing Boeing 777, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A missing Boeing 777. Are they looking up in space for it? <laughs> no. You and I know that a, a plane cannot make it out in space. They're not even looking. They look in the ocean, but they don't look out in outer space. Is that right? <laughs> so how is it that 76 trillion years ago, who made the damn rivets? <laughs> who made the fuel? Who was flying these spirits, these, 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 these statins? Who did all of this stuff? It's a mythical history. It's a Saturday morning cartoon, folks. So what I'm trying to say is, if these people are selling Dianetics, but yet you can't even go into the foundation of Dianetics and get a sound doctrine, then that means that the whole thing is fiction. Right. Yes, sir. Do you know if, uh, you know yes, sir. if you know sir. May I have your name, sir? May I have your name? Mark. Mark Bunker. Hi, Mark Bunker. Do you know if Farrakhan is getting a commission for everybody he brings in? That's a standard process in Scientology. Correct. It would be a standard process. One thing is for certain. 
Although we don't know the inner workings of the relationship between Minister Farrakhan or the, or the Nation of Islam and Scientology, I would be disingenuous if I tried to tell you that. However, what I do know is that you cannot use the terms that they're using, Scientology, Dianetics, pushing the programs, without getting clear, no pun intended, by David Miscavige and that structure of Scientology. So there's money that's being exchanged. We know that normally a person would get a 10% commission minimal, sometimes more based upon the people that you bring in. We do know that they have registered Nation of Islam member on staff. So if your staff within Scientology and you have the ID card saying that you're staff of Scientology, then you are certified Scientologist. Is that right? If I walked in here and I had a badge and I had a gun and I had an ID that said police on it and I got out of a cop car and I came out of the headquarters, then you would say, that's a police officer, right? So they're saying they're holding Scientology identification cards, pushing Scientology things, paying the Scientology head people, walking, pushing Scientology, way to happiness stuff. They're Scientologists, is that right? Yeah. Then that's one and the same. Good question. Um, just more. Yes? No, I, I've seen your, I, I met you ish, and I'm like, boy, your YouTube videos are fabulous. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, where is it? The NOI is the, there's a picture of Hubbard on the wall? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So what does that tell you? I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Not stupid people. No, and, and, and they, they merge that. They, they do have Hubbard on the wall, and, and the, the points that you make are absolutely valid. Right. Absolutely. Yes. But anyway, you're doing a hell of a job. Yeah. Why? Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Well, Hubbard's on record making racist comments, and there's also been some racism attributed to uh, digital scavengers, as far as how he treats prints. So, how is Farrakhan and the NOI that? I, I would say I would say this. You're asking about the Jesse Prince situation and how David Miscavige and, and things that are attributed to him in a negative way with us. Again, you have to have this pimp whore relationship. <laughs> someone has to be the pimp and someone has to be the whore. But if you notice, you don't catch the John with the whore. In other words, you don't see David Miscavige with any of the people, but yet they're the people that are paying him. It's a whore-pimp relationship. So it's as simple as that. A man treats you the way that you are allowed to be treated. So they're on the record, on film, calling you the derogatory terms. You're not demanding that to be denounced. You're never seen with you, so everything you're doing is in the dark. While again, Tony Muhammad was yelling out last week, they want transparency with any dealings with, with Sterling or any dealings that's going on with Los Angeles. What he's trying to do is find an inroad so that the Nation of Islam has, a, has a, an avenue, anything that's going on in Los Angeles. He's trying to sneak in the back door to make sure that anything that happens is going to be reported back to everything that's going on to Scientology. So that's what's going on. Good question. Yes, sir. Among the followers of Louis Farrakhan, has there been any dissent that you know? Has there been any dissent that I know of within the Nation of Islam is the question. I would say that, yes, in one sense, there's a quote unquote civil war or something that's going on. Because you have people that have common sense, and then you have people that are robots. You have people that are caught up in personality and not reasoning to people that use common sense and will say, wait a minute, this doesn't sound quite right. How about I ask some questions? When Minister Farrakhan came into the knowledge and information that I was sharing, he went in front of the world and said, he gave an 18-minute speech, and then he said, I'm not going to answer any more questions about it. That was directed to me, because I'm the person who was first on the scene that was blowing it all up. I was talking about it before he even came forward. He basically got dragged out because of the work that we were doing. We started to challenge the community to say, this is what they're dealing with. Make them come forward and admit it. One month later, he came forward and he had to admit it. So in him saying that, that's what you get. Good question. Oh. Yes, sir. I have a few questions. Uh, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can call Elrond and Devil around me anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So my, my main question is that how did you discover that this alliance was happening um, in its initial steps? And with that, is that how and why did this alliance even start? You would think that someone like the Nation of Islam to partner with a very dangerous cult that is entirely secretive and primarily white, you know what I mean? And based, I, I don't understand what the advantage to the Nation of Islam, why they would even want to take any of this on. I mean, it feels like it just like is a heavy stigma. Scientology is greedy. So I don't understand how it's a mutually beneficial relationship to either one of them. Yes, sir. I would say that the, the history between the Nation of Islam and Scientology, it gets just a, a tad complex. Because what you have is Mr. Farrakhan replaced a minister in Boston. There was a minister in Boston in the 50s. His name was Ulysses. And Ulysses was placed there by Malcolm X. When Ulysses got um, replaced, Malcolm X recommended Lewis to replace Ulysses in Boston. This was in the 50s. So after Ulysses had gotten out, Minister Farrakhan had saw Ulysses later on in life. Ulysses had become a Scientologist. He said, Lewis, you really need to study this Scientology thing. I think it may be beneficial because it goes into the history of you know, what we talk about the 66 trillion years ago. Mind you, L. Ron Hubbard is talking about 76 trillion years ago. They ignore the fact that there's a 10 trillion year difference. <laughs> so, so, there, right? so, they start, so this is how he started to get this in his ear about Scientology through his old minister, Ulysses. Later on in life, he stated and admitted that he was eyeing this relationship between Scientology and the Nation of Islam for 36 years. So he already had in the back of his mind, one day there would be this merging of the Nation of Islam and Scientology. He's on the record admitting this. So in other words, again, back to my community, I want to make this clear, it is impossible for you to be considered a hypocrite or a disbeliever. See, that's what the Scientologists try to do to control you. They want to label you an SP, yeah. right? To me, an SP means absolutely nothing. I'm not a Scientologist. It just means I slap the piss out of you. <laughs> means nothing to me. But it's what they use in order to keep you under control. I don't want to be a suppressive person. I better be good. Well, in the nation of Islam, the controlling thing is a hypocrite or a disbeliever. You don't want to be labeled a hypocrite or a disbeliever. That's an SP. So what happens is that when Minister Farrakhan started using these terms and, and wanted to make this relationship, then it was a disingenuous method of him coming before the people and saying, join me. Because in the back of his mind, he already had this master plan that nobody knew about. There is no L. Ron Hubbard in the letter that we have to write as registered Muslims. We all have to submit a letter. And it's basically a letter that Master Farad Muhammad wrote, it was a, a message between Elijah Muhammad and Master Farad Muhammad. We all have to write that in order to be registered members. L. Ron Hubbard's name is not on that letter. Minister Farrakhan's name is not on that letter. So no one can be considered a hypocrite or a disbeliever by saying, I don't agree with this Scientology thing. What you can do is stand up as a woman and a man and say, I'm going to think for myself. And once you're able to discern the truth from the falsehood, I guarantee at 100% that you will say Scientology is not for me. Now, now to go on to what you were talking about, because it's a very good question. The reason why it started to merge is basically because of money. You have to understand that within our community, we're a Messiah-like people. So from our people, what happens is that when the leadership goes away, the organizations collapse. Our most effective leader that we've ever had was the Honorable Marcus Garvey. He had over 7 million registered members. But when the Honorable Marcus Garvey got deported back to Jamaica, for all intent and purposes, his movement collapsed. But what Minister Farrakhan is able to do is, if you notice, one thing that the Scientologists are able to do is stay firm in a doctrine even though the leader has passed away. 
So if you want to be immortalized, you have to link up with someone who can immortalize you. See, because our leadership is written in sand. After our leaders go away, it blows with the wind. But if you can get with someone who can promise you immortality, because see, this is what the Jewish community had tried to promise Mr. Farrakhan before. If you just do what we want you to do, we'll make sure that history writes you in a good way. Well, basically, this is the same offer that Scientologists are able to offer him also. If you just link up with us, we can make sure all of your tapes go out after you're dead. You'll never, you'll never go away. We can make sure that you are as mortalized as L. Ron Hubbard. Basically, simply. Do you think it's a merchandising deal? Like, I mean, that they're using their promotional arm yeah. that creates all these tapes and books? That, that, that is the arrangement? Well, that is definitely a strong point of what Scientology is able to offer. They are some of the best marketers that I've ever seen in my life. They'll call you an SB and still market you even when you're not supposed to be marketed to. So they're very efficient on getting the word out. So yes, I think that definitely plays a major part. If the Nation of Islam is into a relationship with Scientology, there's definitely a give and take involved in this. And the give and take that I think that they're looking for is they have the buildings. The buildings are empty because the people can get the knowledge and the information and see the bullshit. So they're not going to go. But within our community, they are worshipers of personality of Minister Louis Farrakhan. There's basically nothing that he's going to be able to do that the people, his, that he's going to do what's best for them. Mind you, we have to understand that it was Minister Louis Farrakhan that was a major instrument that allowed Jim Jones to come to the main headquarters of Chicago when he had Jim Jones speaking in front of the Chicago community. I'm the person who showed Minister Farrakhan in the front row while Jim Jones was at the rostrum. We, I was the person who revealed the audio of Jim Jones saying that Minister Louis Farrakhan should break away from War Dean Muhammad and start his own Nation of Islam organization. That's nothing to be overlooked because we know that Jim Jones was a CIA operative. And if he's endorsing Minister Louis Farrakhan by name, telling him that he should go and set up his own shop directly from the live audio of Jonestown, we need to understand why would Jim Jones be endorsing this man? Why is a Fed agent like Al Sharpton doing Dianetics with this man? I can't say that Minister Louis Farrakhan is an agent. I'm just saying that why are these goddamn agents promoting him? That is to be questioned. And why is it that the black community is not questioning this? Where are the celebrities? Where are the athletes? Where are the rappers? Where are the goddamn revolutionaries? Right. Nowhere to be found. <laughs> Although I do give credit to those who did heed my call, I give credit to Bobby Hemmett, I give credit to Dr. Phil Valentine, I give credit to Amin Raswa, I give credit to many within the black community who have stood up with me in order to make sure that the word goes out. Because I'm never alone. I'm never alone. But just like our lessons teach us, that the Earth is approximately covered three-fourths underwater, approximately three-fourths of its surface. The sun and the moon has its attracting power on our planet, while our planet travels at a terrific speed of 1,037 third miles on its way around the sun. The sun is drawing this waters up into the Earth rotation, which is called gravitation, that moves in a fine mist that the naked eye can hardly detect. Meaning that you may not be able to detect it, but we move like a storm and we have the power within us. So what we have to do is make sure that we're working amongst one another so that we can accomplish this mission of freeing our people. Yes, sir. Did, did you? Oh, oh, I thought you were talking. Um, Louis Farrakhan is getting on in years. Who's going to take over for him when he dies? Um, the question is asked, Mr. Louis Farrakhan is getting up in years. Who's going to take over uh, once he uh, passes away? I don't know that for sure. I know that they do have a council of people that are, uh, that are responsible for carrying out whatever his wishes are. Um, I don't think there's any point person that is uh, one person, singular person, that's going to lead the nation of Islam. I don't know the inner workings of that, um, but that's the closest that I know. There's a council of people that will that will direct. It. 
Did you, have, did you have another part of your question? I, I did. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to dominate. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in how the theology of Scientology and the Nation of Islam would even intersect. Is there a point where they give you a certain course and then it kind of stops and they're not trying to encourage? Um, in other words, if there's a focus on Dianetics and applied scholastics, but it doesn't make mention of OT levels and stuff like that, because is there a point where the theology contradicts each other with, um, I don't mean to be distractible, but like Yakub and stuff like that? Yes. Like you have like Yakub mythology, I would argue, and then you have like stuff like Xenu mythology. Right. Is that, has there been a point where they cross, where they, or has that never even really been addressed? I, I, that's, that's the point that I'm trying to say, that there's, there's a disingenuous tone in how it's promoted to the people. They want the people to believe that there's a difference between Dianetics and Scientology. They're trying to convince the people that they know are ignorant. When I say the people, I'm saying the black community. They know that the black community is ignorant about Scientology, just as the Scientologists and the white community are ignorant about the nation of Islam. So they're playing on that by saying that we're only studying Dianetics. So basically that absolves anything else. They'll say, well, those are Scientologists and their theology. That isn't us at all. While, uh, while doing everything that a Scientologist would do. So when you challenge them and say, well, what about Zenith? They say, well, number one, if they're not of the height of level, they're not going to know about it. But even after they find out about it, they just say, well, Mr. Farrakhan didn't teach us about that. He's only teaching us uh, Dianetics. So they have these blinders on and that's what's keeping them separated from facing the truth. They're like, uh, for uh, example, an ostrich with a head in the sand, they're refusing to acknowledge the total truth of the situation itself. Wow. Okay. Thanks. You want right. Yes, ma'am. Do you think that there's a, a distrust in the black community against conventional white um, history and science that maybe makes them So your, your question basically that you're asking is that, do I think that there's a, a difference? A distrust. A distrust in the black community. In the black community <laughs> toward the classical Western. Towards the classical Western in comparison to right. what Dianetics and Scientology can offer? And that's I, part of wider Yes. I, I think what you'll find is this. Even within Scientology itself, you'll find a kernel of truth. And within that kernel of truth is woven a false theology around that truth. So in other words, if a person has a distrust for, we'll say, psychology and psychiatry, there may be some valid points about that that need to be explored. Maybe there is some abuses of something that takes place within psychiatry. but. That doesn't, you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. So in other words, just because psychiatry may have something wrong here, doesn't mean that I pick up Dianetics over here at the cost of abortion, human rights abuses, et cetera, et cetera. So what's happening, and that's what's happening. It's not a total rejection of Western medicine or what Western uh, uh, education can, can offer. But even within Scientology, they're embracing the little bit of truth and basically accepting all of the wickedness that comes along with it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have been a member of your forum for a while, the Scientology invasion of the black community. Yes, I find it fascinating, yes, um, the whole merging of Scientology and the nation of Islam. I, I still don't get it. I honestly think it's stranger than seeing who dropped the faith. But um, I just, and I see the followers of the Nation of Islam then on your forum and debating and arguing, you know, with people like you, and how they do say that this is not Scientology, this is Dianetics. Right. And uh, I'm just wondering if we're witnessing, you know, different Christian, you know, like the Protestants, the Lutherans, how they branch out and they start their own thing. So do you think that we are about to witness the Nation of Islam is going to have going to branch out with people like you that are true followers of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, yes. where it's going to be people like you, and then there's going to be this splinter group of the Scientology Nation of Islam. Yes, that's definitely.
exactly what's going to happen. To, to answer your question, yes. What you're witnessing right now is an expanded civil war of what's taking place. Because at the end of the day, you know, a person can either rely on Dianetics and Scientology to help them, as they say, this technology to help them, or they can, or they can deal with a, a, an entire core foundation of either holistic living or, or finding your own faith, being able to discern truth from falsehood, and just being able to critically think. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the robots, and you're going to get the people who can critically think and analyze. I can have friendships in all walks of life. I can respect each and every human being for who and what they are. I don't need Dianetics to give me a false identification for me to understand that, because I know that the cost of me accepting someone within that structure is means that I'm gonna say what? I'm gonna call this person an SP? Or I'm going to treat this person differently to make myself feel better? No, there's no need to have to do that. So that's really what you see within the forum itself. What you find is a controlled way. We invite uh, Nation of Islam people to come and join the forum just so that they can share their perspective and their point of view also. But when we are able to challenge them back, you start to see that they don't have any answers for the questions that we ask them. So that's exactly what you're witnessing as well. Good question. Is this in terms of the actual numbers? Like, if you look at the the numbers of the Nation of Islam, right? You contrast that with, like, say, the numbers of Scientology, which are dwindling in a way. We might hope. Um, but I mean, how pervasive is this percentage of the amount of, of people in, in the Nation of Islam who are now reading Dianetics, or now are they just doing straight up e-meter full the full process? They are. They're going through the email and the, and the whole process. And basically this relationship between the Nation of Islam and the Scientologists, they're just coming out of that honeymoon phase right now. They were in love for the first couple of years, but now the reality is starting to kick their ass and they're going broke. So as soon as you start putting the pressure on them to start paying for more stuff, because it's a pay-as-you-go religion, as you know, by your paying as you're going and you are already low on your financing, you're starting to get the reality that maybe Ishmael was right. Maybe I'm being pimped. Maybe I'm being exploited. Maybe I'm doing something that's not going to be to the best benefit of where I'm supposed to be right now. That's the reality of what they're starting to face. Our forum is, has thousands of people on there of people that are getting the knowledge and the information. I get lots and lots of emails of people from the inside of the Nation of Islam pleading with me to work harder, pleading with me to please be a voice to the voiceless because they feel like they're, they're under a form of abuse. They feel as if they're being forced into the situation because they have a sincere love for the truth. They have a sincere love for Elijah Muhammad. They have a sincere love and respect for Minister Farrakhan. And they simply cannot wrap their mind around the concept that maybe they, they're into something that they don't understand. But once you're able to point out to them, this is the same person who told you that Jim Jones was OK. <laughs> I mean, how did it turn out for those thousands of people, the thousand people that ended up getting killed? They drunk the Kool-Aid. So we say, don't eat the bean pie. <laughs> don't do it. You already saw part one. It's the same players. Instead of David Miscavige, you had Jim Jones. He stands there. But you're not even seen with David Miscavige. How can you pay a man who's, who's so ashamed that he won't even be seen with you? So just simple logic and telling them to really think about it, it's waking them up by the tens and the dozens and the dozens and the dozens. So that's what you're starting to see, sir. Okay. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you again. I'd like to leave you everything.